beautiful late afternoon in Atlanta. And it's time for NASCAR Cup Series qualifying as they will take to the mile and a half high banks here at Atlanta to find out who will start up front for tomorrow evening's race. This is Ty Dillon behind the wheel of the Rays Energy Blue Shock Chevrolet. Moved over to Spire Motorsports. Ty Dillon and brother Austin, they spent a lot of time here in Atlanta growing up racing legend cars here on the quarter mile just on the front stretch. It's like the car a win chased up there a little bit. Yeah, yeah, three or four. It seems like the white and red line around the bottom doesn't really quite match the arc that the track, the cars itself want to take. They kind of come close to it and away from it. You see a big speed difference between I the six to two. Three and four real bad. Loose in three and four. So to Jeff's point, they're talking about handling characteristics out there by themselves. Yeah, that's just something, Junior, that you know, you go to Daytona and Talladega to qualify, you don't ever hear drivers talking about being loose. You'll hear them talk about it, hits the track hard or something, but it's this, the radius of this racetrack, the corners is so much tighter than those types of racetracks. It puts, it makes handling that much more difficult. We're gonna continue to compare to Harrison Burton or the top lap so far. See that big bump off turn two? Think about this track being pretty smooth, but you can see that car hop. Yeah, we drove around it today, and it was it was smooth, but it's starting to get some imperfections. You see some patches on the racetrack, and some sealer had been added in some of the areas between the seams. I think I'd have been okay with it, too, actually, after what I've seen today. <laughs> yeah. Just make sure you bring the car back to me. As Kyle Busch now the final to take time here at Atlanta. And remember Kyle Busch, what his, his teammate Austin Dillon, he was all but wrecked, he was so loose. He's all the way down in 30 seconds, so I'm sure they made some air pressure adjustments to this car. He told Kyle to hang on. Way up the racetrack he goes. Two tenths of a second, slower than Austin Sendrick, so that will guarantee Sendrick into the final round of qualifying. Ten drivers will be battling it out to find out who is the fastest, win the pole. You wonder, right, why are we doing this? They're just going to go out and run the same time again, but they do have some adjustments, Steve, that may affect the balance of the car, the ability for them to hold the car wide open to be tighter around the apron to run a shorter distance. Absolutely. Plus, what, what has, um, you know, the first lap temperature-wise improved mechanically, like other uh, hubs, you know the gearbox why those are all the same in all these cars it's purchased do they all run the same gear oil do they run the same lubricants the engine itself is it more effective or efficient the second time and for the normally i would consider it mostly mechanical but to dale's point rick you know these have all been reasonably a handful to drive so maybe now you you've done it one time you have a better idea what to expect cindric within two one hundredths of a second of you're, what he ran in the first round. You're killing our theory, Rick. You're killing our theory. We <laughs> thought they'd be <laughs> everybody won't be within two one hundredths. Somebody's going to have a change. Thirty one forty eight for Austin Cendrick. As now we see Eric Almarola. He was another name on the list of top 20 who's below the cut line that has a possibility he could win his way into the playoffs. This is a pretty decent lap compared to Harvick right here. They were reasonably close, about four tenths, or excuse me, four one hundredths different in the first round. It looks like Elmer's going to have a bigger pickup than Harvick did. This looks like, to me, is going to be the fastest lap of the day so far. 31-26. It is the fastest lap of the day for <laughs> Eric Almarola. Talked to him at length in Chicago uh, last weekend. And he says he's, you know, he, he didn't use the word frustrated, but they're questioning where that speed is. Uh, and he said it hasn't been any one thing. He said if it was one thing, we'd figure it out and we'd be able to run well. But he said it's, it's just been one thing after another that they've had to kind of chase down to find the speed and the finishing positions. As we see Blaney still in the red. Coming down a little bit. Is he going to get there? He does not. Almirola wins the pole in Atlanta. 
Get a thumbs up out of the driver. Eric, what was the difference maker that round for a pole winning run? <laughs> You'd have to ask Drew that. I don't know. Um, you know, I, I thought uh, the car drove decent the first round, but it looked like a lot of guys were having a hard time. Uh, but my Smithfield Ford Mustang drove really good. Just needed a little bit more speed, and Drew made uh, a few adjustments. And that second round, we had the speed we needed. So just really proud of Drew and all the guys on this race team. Everybody back at Stuart Haas Racing, we've been working so hard to get our cars where they need to be. So just proud of everybody's effort and work. Uh, thank you to Doug Yates and everybody at Roush Yates Engine Shop. You need a lot of horsepower when you come to a place where you run wide open. So just proud of everybody. Uh, we're going to lead the field to the green, but hopefully we can finish there on Sunday with a Smithfield Ford Mustang. Eric Amarola's focus continues, guys, as he's strapped in for pit road practice here at Atlanta. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports and NBC YouTube channel.